And as I was talking to this guy, I was very kind to him and polite to him, right? But you know, in my heart, I was thinking, you jerk, you're damning this whole world to hell with your stupidity. This world is not hearing the gospel because of people like you who want to sit around and say, oh, God's going to get it done on his own. No, he told you to do it. Amen. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And we're sitting there hiding the gospel under a bushel and saying, oh, well, you know, God's going to get it done. And then the guy said, well, what are you saying that all these people have never heard of Jesus are going to go to hell? Anti-Calvinist derangement syndrome, also known as ACDS, is a theological and spiritual condition that afflicts hundreds of thousands of people each year. No one knows exactly when it started, but we do know that it's been around for approximately 2,000 years in one form or another. Unfortunately, the condition has reemerged in the 21st century with a newfound vigor, leading all sorts of people across the United States and the rest of the world to be infected by it. There are dozens of different variants of this condition, but we're going to focus on a specific variant known as Variant P. People who have been infected with Variant P are usually easy to spot, mostly because of the physical and visual manifestations that they display. Symptoms are easy to spot in some of them, such as the infamous preacher Stephen Anderson but not so easy to spot in others. Before we begin our investigation into the sickness, let me give you a short list of the symptoms that ACDS victims suffer from in order to help you identify the carriers of this disease. People infected with ACDS usually have an unhealthy fascination with Calvinism. They spend an inordinate amount of time speaking, teaching, and making YouTube videos about it. Their YouTube and social media pages are absolutely saturated with the very idea of Reformed theology and they feel compelled by the sickness to address, and in many cases, combat Calvinism at all costs. Let me show you an example of a man that has been inflicted with this horrible disease. As is evident in the title of the Beyond the Fundamentals channel, there is a paranoia about Calvinism that appears to be present. It is as if the host of the channel believes Calvinism to be on par with sociological cults, like Heaven's Gate, or possibly Jim Jones. Despite the fact that Calvinism is just another theological framework that people utilize in order to understand and process what they read in scripture, people like this are convinced that it is a cult conglomeration that is out to destroy the kingdom of God one young mind at a time. Another symptom of ACDS is that of ad hominem attacks or projection wherein the ACDS victim will attribute attributes or truths to the Calvinists that don't actually exist. They will make claims about Calvinism that it doesn't actually make itself, call it truth, and then proceed to destroy those straw man arguments. Explaining scripture to a Calvinist one issue at a time is like trying to make a bed with fitted sheets that are too small. In Isaiah 28, 20 it says, For the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than he can wrap himself in it. And that's a great description of Calvinism. It's a system that never quite covers everything. So every time you're trying to explain something scriptural to a Calvinist, it never quite wraps around and something's always poking out somewhere that it doesn't need to be. So it really is like trying to make a bed with fitted sheets that are too small. You cover one corner and two others pop off. You explain how scripture isn't a lie in one place and that makes Calvinists worry about The infected will often claim that the Calvinist has no answer to the objections and will attempt to preemptively silence any argument against them. There is often an attempt to pretend that no answer or rebuttal is possible or has been given, even though there are entire videos and books dedicated to helping the victim cure himself of this affliction and clear up any issues or misunderstandings. Yeah, you can see me, that's great. So verse 22, let's start in verse 22 because this is important, right? You want to set up the context, what's going on, where is he, who is he speaking to, why are they there? So verse 22, on the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea, that saw there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus did not enter the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. The third symptom of ACDS sometimes manifests itself as something that is akin to mockery or disrespect. The variant P carrier sees Calvinism as something low or beneath them, which then gives them justification to mock or demean Calvinism and its adherents. An example of this can be seen in this rap video of deceased reform apologist R.C. Sproul. There was a cry from heaven, God damn. You, Whoa. because that's what it meant to be cursed, to be damned, Whoa. to be under the anathema. As I said, I don't understand that, Whoa. but I know that it's true. There was a cry from heaven, God damn you. Whoa. 
And the one who was pure was pure no more. And God cursed him. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. God damn you. Note that the creator of this video attempts to paint Dr. Sproul in the poorest light possible. Making sure to use a phrase taken out of context from a lecture of Dr. Sproul, or a sermon, it makes it sound as if he is using profanity. For most people, this would be seen as disrespect, but for the variant carrier, this is seen as a useful tool to discredit the subject of the video and paint them in the poorest light possible. And finally, the fourth and final symptom, and that is of fascination and fixation. Not all people with ACDS have the fourth symptom, but those who do are easy to spot. Let me introduce Variant P Crown Zero, Soteriology 101, and Dr. Leighton Flowers. Dr. Flowers embodies all things ACDS, containing all of the before mentioned symptoms, but adding a new one. The fixation I mentioned a second ago is in reference to the subject's fixation on a single person or subject. And for Dr. Flowers, that is Dr. James White. For anyone that has observed the continued fixation of Dr. Flowers on Dr. White, and his affliction has been going on for years now, it is plainly obvious that he has an overabundance and reliance on interactions and critiques of Dr. White. Nothing that Dr. White says is ever listened to, even though it may be heard in a sense. Or rather, it is discarded, or redefined, using the system that Dr. Flowers holds to. Here is a video of Dr. White attempting to help Dr. Flowers work through his variant distortions, with little to no success. FW, Libertarian Free Will. Stop right there. L Leighton, are you listening? Rich just said no. Um, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Maybe you can't hear. Maybe you are so invested in this theory and it and i've talked about this with other people that there are going to be people who are, are not going to hear a word that i'm saying i get it i understand it when this is your big scholar guy and someone starts going that doesn't work that doesn't work you're you're gonna you're gonna double down um instead of the one thing they hold in common Leighton, the reformed understanding of God's decree flows from the Trinitarian understanding of God as the creator of all things who through creation is glorifying himself. The Stoics, the Gnostics, and the Manichaeans, each of which have major differences between them as to the nature of time cosmogony, the nature of creation, and man. None of them have a personal triune deity that can produce a divine decree that is self-glorifying. As you can see with Dr. White here, he attempts in every way possible to be as specific, meaningful, and descriptive as he possibly can. He attempts to help Dr. Flowers and those who struggle with ACDS to understand the Calvinist position. He and others, like myself, have been trying for many years to bring our position across in a understandable sense. We try to define ourselves in the easiest way possible without being too simplistic. We're very open and specific with our sources, with our sources of authority and the two sources of authority for the calvinist are god's sovereignty and sola scriptura every time we make an argument or we try to make a point we always show people back to scripture scripture is the final authority not the calvinist but the problem with people with acds is that they as i've shown you before have this idea that calvinists are a cult and we start somewhere outside the Bible and we work into the Bible, despite our efforts to show people uh, as much as possible that we work from the scripture out. Now, you may not agree with our 
presuppositions or our conclusions. But if you suffer with ACDS, do know that we are attempting to show you from the text itself, and sometimes from history if necessary, that our beliefs, our presuppositions, our foundational starting points come from the Word of God. It's not an outside system, it didn't start with the Gnostics, it didn't start with Rome. And if you want to look outside of scripture, you could look at somebody like Clement of Rome, dated somewhere at the end of the first century, and it's almost as if he sounds like a Calvinist before the phrase Calvinism was ever formed. Thank you for stopping by. I hope this helps those of you who have ACDS. I hope I'm help able to help you work through your issues. Uh, if you are a variant P carrier, uh, I do feel bad for you. Uh, if I could help you, uh, perhaps write you a prescription. Uh, that prescription would be to watch as much Alpha and Omega Ministries videos as possible, to read some of their books, perhaps look at R.C. Sproul, a man who was defamed earlier in this recording. Uh, his book, Chosen by God, is excellent. There's also John MacArthur, Fody Bauckham, and Paul Washer, all great resources to help you work through this affliction of anti-Calvinist derangement syndrome. Thanks for stopping by.